Now, I'm sure you've heard stories from six figure sellers like me, seven figure sellers, and maybe even an eight figure seller. But in this episode of the e commerce swipe file, I was lucky enough to meet the Gandhi brothers, a pair of entrepreneurs based right here in Toronto who have scaled up to a nine figure business in just a few years. We actually met at their new office and warehouse where we recorded the video, which was actually pretty interesting. And we talked about a lot of different things that really impact every merchant as they scale up from having multiple warehouses around the world to drop shipping certain products to scaling off and spinning off more brands. We really talked about all the different ways and challenges that occur as you scale your business up from six figures to seven figures to eight figures to nine figures. So I hope you enjoy this very special episode of the Ecom Swipe File powered by Gorgeous. On everyone, it's Lucas here from Gorgeous with Global Ebrands. I'm here with one of the founders, Nirav, and this is a very special episode because we've had some seven figure sellers on the e commerce swipe file, probably some eight figure sellers on the e commerce swipe file, but I think this is our first nine figure e commerce brand. One of the ways they got to doing nine figures, they have over 150 different stores and brands on Shopify. When you get to be that big, you gotta get your own warehouse. So, I have a couple tips today about fulfillment in terms of coming around, really when it makes sense to bring fulfillment in-house, working with a fulfillment partner, but also how you can grow a brand and then knowing when to spin that off into a second brand. So, Nirav, what's your first tip if uh, another merchant came to you and said, you know, we're thinking of opening up our, our own warehouse, our own fulfillment center. When would you say it's better to do fulfillment with a third party versus bringing it in-house? And when did you guys make that decision? Actually, from the start we were always in-house uh, so we've never used a 3PL. There's several benefits and disadvantages for that I guess. Uh, the benefit would be you have total control of every single aspect of it, um, making sure the product quality is good, uh, the shipping time frames are controllable but it becomes difficult I guess when you're scaling uh, especially you know sometimes when you might you might run out of uh, manpower to ship if you're shipping 10-20 thousand units a day becomes challenging. When you have your own fulfill, fulfillment company, you want to, it kind of helps you align with your own vision when when you kind of outsource it. Things may get a little bit expensive or, or it may not go as much as you want, but then there is uh, economies of scale when you do a 3PL. You no, know, that makes, that makes a ton of sense. And then on the growth side, what was the biggest factor that, that really got you to, to get into nine figures? Was it spinning off multiple brands? Was it really going to doubling down on, on your big wins? Of what got you to that 1 million, 10 million, and 100 million dollar mark? Um, I mean, everything happened very quickly. Uh, you know, we only started around four to five years ago, uh, and every year, you know, our revenue is tripled, quadrupled, uh, and, you know, we're at like around 200 million now. Um, the difference is just uh, more of it. Um, you know, when we first started off, we had, you know, one or two brands. Each, each brand does around a couple of million, but then uh, we used that as an advantage, created 175 different niches. Uh, each one does a couple million, but if you combine them all together, it kind of becomes a sustainable business. Yeah, no, absolutely. And where do you find that line of uh, when it makes sense to either kill a brand, kill it off, or maybe double down, merge it with, an, with another one? Uh, no, that's a great question. So uh, we don't necessarily always kill a brand uh, as quickly uh, because we find there's a lot of seasonality. A product that worked, you know, uh, a couple months ago might trend downwards, mm -hmm. but then you know a few months later it might come back up with the right advertising and using, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the, the, the right scaling methods. And I wonder if you see not just with seasonality but at scale. Let's say you're doing a like a, something for your patio. So very much a summertime product right. is you can see with our uh, nice Patagonia and winter jackets on, it's pretty cold here in Toronto today, but down in Australia, it's summer. So do you see the regional shifts as well? With the uh, no, definitely, definitely. So we have, uh, as, as we have so many different products, uh, you know, uh, winter times we have uh, sandals. So sandals may not work well right now in, uh, you know, the North American market. But globally, some of the countries still, you know, there's great sales in them. So that kind of helps us. That's why, you know, the number of brands that we have kind of help us stay, you know, afloat, uh, especially during seasonality. If it doesn't sell in one part of the country, it might sell in the world, it might sell in the other part. Yeah, and I think that's a really great tip 
to, to close it out on is test different markets according to seasonality. Not everything has to have even sales year round. Obviously this time of year, right around the holidays between Black Friday and the New Year, you do see a large spike of sales. But if you are selling something seasonal like sandals, try shifting the markets around within the hemispheres and around the world to get those sales up year round. So. Awesome, thanks so much for joining yeah, us no on, the, on the e-commerce swipe file. Don't forget to like, comment, share this video with your mother-in-law. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Subscribe to the podcast for the audio. Every episode is a nice tactical takeaway that you can implement in your own store. And we're also gonna be starting to put out some of our other content, so webinars, longer form audio formats. We're just gonna drop in here. Hopefully you like them. Cheers.